What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we are finally going to be installing the SNS Disaster Prevention Kit Gen 2. I want you guys to all take a serious thought about getting this on your 6.7 because that extra protection is going to come from SNS. Alright guys, check this install out. Let's do it. Alright guys, thanks so much for coming back and checking us out. Make sure to share this video and like it and make sure to check SNS out because after seeing this product and talking about it on the live stream, finally having it in my hands, this is something that uh, I really want to get on my truck and somebody's already beat me to the punch. One of my customers with a 21 is already head of the game and has got this and wants it on his truck. So we're gonna do that tonight for him. And I wanna show you guys uh, the way uh, to kind of take all this apart. I know it may look kind of confusing to some being that it's all kind of crammed in here, but uh, this particular truck's got a few things missing and I told this bozo not to be rocking that other person's company's stuff. Some people don't listen, but nonetheless, we're gonna get this upper intake off and cack tubes and we're going to get down to the high pressure pump. So to get the upper intake off, there are four fasteners on this runner. There are four fasteners on this runner coming off of the intake down to the valve cover and there's going to be uh, a trim clip and such on the, one of the studs of the bolts. It's going to be your choice whether or not you want to drain the coolant. Uh, I kind of don't want to drain the coolant on this guy's truck, um, but I think I'm just going to take this line off and kind of maybe position it over here out of the way. I'm going to remove the hot side charge air cooler duct. I'm going to remove the cold side charge air cooler duct. And I am also going to remove the fuel filter and its cup that it sits in just to get a little better access to getting the intake manifold off. It does say you're gonna to have to remove the cowl. And if you guys remember the 2020 turbo uh, that I replaced, uh, if you guys reference that, I'll make sure to put a link in the description. I didn't take this off to get this off. I took what I just told you off and was able to finagle the intake up out of my way. So that's what we're gonna to do today. I'm gonna to get all suited up. I don't have my purple gloves. We're rocking the black gloves, but uh, I'm gonna rock the Milwaukee's. Chris, you hear me? And uh, we're gonna get this stuff taken off. So uh, let's go. All right, go ahead and get your clamps on your air filter, snorkel loose. And we're gonna separate coolant line from its little position holder there. So we're going to twist and pull off. All right, so one of the next things I told you we're going to do is we're going to take this coolant line off. I've already went ahead and used my trim tool to pop that one out. I also have one over here. But just to get a couple more things out of my way, you have a vacuum line over here that just pops right off. You have a black button on this line that you depress and pop off. Same with this side. Just go ahead and get the plastic line out of your way. And then the next thing you're gonna come up here, you also have another trim clip, which I busted. Gonna have to replace that, give them another trim clip, take home. But there are two eight milli bolts holding this plate in. For whatever reason, I don't know why it's so important to put Loctite on those, but uh, make sure you have a ratcheting wrench to go underneath the cowl. And then uh, that forward one, you can use uh, air tools or electrics to remove it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take the charger cooler temp sensor out. We have a trim clip fastening it right here and then to the coolant line. And I'm just gonna kind of loop that over the power steering reservoir. All right, one of the things I'm gonna do is let all the pressure out of the cooling system. I'm not gonna drain it. I've already taken and removed the cap, relieved the pressure. Since I have this line set sitting here, if I were just to get 
this section off, I'm gonna be able to peel this all the way up over and out of my way. Let me get my pliers. Here go my pliers. And we're going to gingerly work this clamp off like so. Oh, and look who's here. DS Trucks. <laughs> How's it going? All right. Then we're just gonna pull this line off. Twist and pull, people. Twist and pull. I don't think that much coolant should come out, if any, because we're not running. Just keep it lifted up. Oh, we're, we're pouring out some. All right, I'm gonna clamp that off. All right, we got it clamped off and she's not leaking anymore. I'm just gonna get this hose up out of the way so it's a little more accessible. All right, next step, I'm pulling off the cold side charge air cooler tube. Get you a little pocket screwdriver or a pick. In this situation, I'm using a trim tool and you're gonna just pop that metal ring all the way around from where it was seating and then just wiggle and tug that part off. Make sure to put the clip back on because you're gonna reuse it. Down here on the charge air cooler side, we have a seven mil clamp that I've already gone ahead and loosened. I'm just gonna wiggle and pull that pipe off. Let's check it out. Okay, got a little bit of oil in there. Tiny bit, doesn't look too bad. All right, saving the part. So one of the things I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna rip this throttle body off. We have four eight milli bolts in a square pattern. I don't have to, but just to not inhibit the upper intake manifold coming off and the throttle body motor hitting the fan stator, I'm just gonna take it off and get it out of the way. There is a metal gasket between here, so make sure to capture it. You will have an electrical connector if it's plugged in. I am using Milwaukee electric tools. Shout out to them. Hopefully they're listening, but once you get the throttle body off, you guys can inspect yours to see how gummed up, if it is at all. I'm just making sure I spin this bolt in so I don't lose this gasket or the bolts. The gasket only goes on one way, but here's the throttle body. This truck, how many miles did you say your truck's got on it? I don't know, I think he said he had like 24,000 miles on it, 25,000 miles on it. Looks pretty clean. Save this, because we're putting it back on. All right, my next step, I am going to remove the hot side charge air cooler duct. We got a seven milli holding that on. And we have some, uh, another kind of clip on that side, just like we did on the cold side. Uh, we're gonna have to release those clamps or the clip rather, and pull that off. So I'm gonna twist this pipe so that you're looking at those two little nubs right there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a flat blade screwdriver and I'm going to pop that clip just up like that, just enough so it's out of its little spring seat. And I'm gonna twist and pull this pipe off, just like that. I'm going to take this clip and I'm going to go just like that. Save this part because we're putting it back on. Next step, going for the oil dipstick tube. It's got a nut, 10 milli. And we have another bolt back here. Right here, 10 mil. And we're just going to kind of move that dipstick tube out of our way once we fully remove this bolt. Okay, dipstick tube. Got to take it off the stud. Off the studly do-right. Uh, there we go. Now we have a little more maneuverable play with uh, getting around those bolts. But uh, I think, remember what I told you guys, I think the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this fuel filter. So right now I'm going to try to collect any fuel that's going to come out of here. OK, 
Okay, just a little bit. Get this line loose. A little bit. Turn line. Showed you guys all how to take these ones off. Just need to get under here just a smidge. Or not. It hurts my fingers. There we go. Get that little green guy up. And then I'm gonna slide that off. Just like that. So we got all of our lines off, just kind of chilling here. This guy said, do not make a mess on my truck. I said, yes sir. So we're gonna try to carefully remove this fuel filter without dumping and making a mess all over this valve cover. We will be reusing this fuel filter. And then that leaves you pretty much looking right at the fuel bowl, the fuel pocket that the filter sits in. So we kind of move these lines all out of the way. Okay, all we'll have to deal with is this big boy line here. In case we got some drips and leaks, I'll just kind of disperse some rags in this area. Try to keep it as clean and neat as possible. All right, we got a couple of eight millis holding this fuel filter bowl on. All right, this one's a little tricky. So we have one bolt here holding this fuel manifold to the fuel bowl. Okay, it is a different length of bolt, but there is a one bolt underneath this line set. You guys can see I'm pulling up on the line, okay? We're gonna go ahead and get that bolt. And we should be able to just lift the bowl right out. So that was what we were trying to achieve. Let's keep everything in there. In fact, these bolts up here that I I took off. Might as well just set these in here too. All right, don't lose it. All right, guys, I have already went ahead and loosened the intake manifold. Now, it may seem a little less clustered in here because this guy's got a few things that are missing, but if you guys still have that stuff on, you're gonna just have to work around it. And I guess showing you on this would be a little better because now you can actually see where everything is. We have the studded bolt that the oil dipstick tube fastened to. We have three more eight milli bolts all the way around the intake manifold. On the other side runner, same kind of thing. We have a studded eight mil bolt and three similar looking bolts to what we just saw right here. After you do that, we have three 10 milli bolts, same as our 11 through 16s, just a different material that we're removing. Go ahead and make sure to remove your manifold absolute pressure sensor connector. And once you get everything loose, it is sitting in here just like this, okay? Now, I haven't taken one of these off in a minute, so we're gonna figure out together how to remove this whole upper intake manifold. See, if I had that throttle body on, I'd be fighting this plastic piece. Come on. It's almost there. There we go. We have arrived. Here it is. This is our metering valve, our volume control valve. This is everything. This is what you remove when you look for metal glitter paint. But that is what we're gonna to try to prevent by installing this SNS disaster prevention kit. So once you get your truck tore down, it's gonna look something similar to this. And we're now gonna to refer to these instructions and we're gonna go over uh, SNS's procedure and how to install this on the Ford 6.7. All right, so the next step, once we have reached 
the VCV. Well, I just realized that I used brake clean to double check and clean all of this out. And it ate the blue paint off. So I guess take note and don't use brake clean because I just button hooked myself. But once you gain access to the uh, VCV, SNS has supplied some new O-rings. You're going to push this all the way down in this groove like so. And it has a black O-ring that you're going to work on like that. I am going to apply a, a little coat of clean engine oil to this once I install this into the port. But let's get back on the truck and remove the factory volume control valve. All right, well here's our VCV. To disconnect it, we're gonna have to slide that white tab back. We're gonna push on that end of the white tab, which depresses the button, which allows you to get the connector off. So once that's out of the way, we have a T25 Torx, two of them that we're gonna need. And what I am using is a long bit um, from Matco because down here by this coolant crossover tube, it's a little tight to get to. So I'm gonna rip this out. Carefully not to drop anything. Go for this one here. Got it. I think I'm gonna need a magnet for that. All right, I'm gonna go for the bolt right here. Come on. And of course, you get the magnet, it doesn't want to come out. Just make sure I got it screwed out all the way. And yes, it looks like it does. A little cauliflower. All right, maybe I can just pull it out with the bolt still in it. Twist and pull easily. Still got the bolt in. And what the heck? I would have thought for sure this bolt is all the way out. There's a screw bolt. Okay. I don't know what's holding me up. There we go. There is the metering valve, you guys. That's it right there. No metal debris. This customer has been running a fuel additive. I don't know if he's been running it every tank, every tank, but uh, so far that looks pretty dang good. All right, let's get that SNS kit on here and see how this is going to fit back on. All right, folks. So once you get in position, you're going to want to just kind of gingerly work this thing in here like that. It's now seated. You have your volume control valve. I'm gonna go ahead and put these new longer four millimeter Allen bolts that SNS provides. I'm gonna go ahead and start that by hand. Get this other one. Once you get it all mounted flush, we're going to Hand snug these. Uh, the torque spec is now 60 inch pounds. Um, but I have a good enough feel to where I know uh, what these are supposed to be at. So I'm gonna get the applicable tools. I'm gonna snug it down. All right, I'm just gonna snug these boys down. Okay. And that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and just plug this connector back in. Let's get my fat paw in there. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. And this is what you are gonna be looking at. And once you back up out of your vehicle, you're gonna be having a line set that's gonna be sitting here like this. We're gonna deal with that here in the next shot. All right, gentlemen, this is the uh, kind of, I guess, weird thing you have to do. We need to remove this line from this metal line. Now, you guys could cut it, but I don't want you to mar up that metal line. So, what SNS's instructions are if you use a little bit of heat to 
so I guess if you want to say soften the lineup maybe heat it up a little bit and let's see if we can pull this line off oh. I just have a feeling it's gonna obviously get destroyed. Oh, she doesn't want to move at all. Mm, let me see if uh, I can get my pliers. Some more heat. Maybe. Let's see if we can just bust it loose first. Okay, I just turned it. Okay, a little more heat. Don't really want to do this. I hate to smell that plastic. Man, that just does not want to pull off. I don't want to mess anything else up and I also don't want to start a fire okay I'm just trying to twist and pull this hard line is obviously not meant to come off Don't really have a whole lot of room. Man, that stinks. Come on, baby. coming it's just uh, not not that easy oh here it comes all right you guys I'm gonna try to catch some of this fuel leaking down okay hose is full of fuel you guys can see that that's exactly what we had to do. Not using this anymore. There's our line. I didn't want to damage it by squeezing the line too hard and kind of mushroom mushrooming it over. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like. I'm satisfied with that. The hose now that we are going to install is this short hose it's gonna go on here like so I'm gonna push it on over that first bar so my mistake I want to add something make sure so we have the first barb the second barb SNS's instructions are to put the clamp behind the second barb so I just readjusted that slid the a hose on farther and if you have the sound deadening material you can see the hose pretty much stops right there so you can kind of use that for orientation all right I have completed and put the upper intake and lower intakes back on and I am just now routing the hoses and I am super psyched about how I got this guy's installation going I have a factory clip a factory clip zip tie we have the line that we added on with the new line attached to it going around the oil fill so look at this right now all three of our hoses are going to be sitting just like this that is very factory looking SNS I'm loving it so far absolutely we're gonna continue going on I'm gonna put the fuel filter in and then we're gonna put on the return filter that's provided in the kit. 
All right, guys, so we are at the final step, and we're going to be installing this filter bracket. Now, in the instructions, which you're going to see here on the left side of the screen, there are going to be some fasteners and materials that we're not going to use, depending on if you had the 11 through 16 or the 17 through 20, well, I guess 22. Um, so right now, your 2017, you're going to be looking like this. You have two smaller bolts, two nuts, two washers, and a metal bracket that you're going to attach to this metal bracket. Now I've already went and assembled this and tightened it and we're ready for installation for that. But the next part you're gonna to need to do is remove just this side of the cowl. We have one clip, two clip, and three clip. Once we get that off, we are going to be removing this plastic trim clip pop that up like that and we are going to discard it but I'm gonna give this gentleman all of his fasteners back because that's what I was told to do um, we are now going to be installing this bolt and spacer we're going to be installing a washer then this bolt which is a four millimeter Allen again and I'm gonna go ahead and put that through the hole, like so. All the way through, you guys can see it hanging, hanging down here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here, so we're gonna be sitting here like that. You guys check that out. It's gonna be kind of awkward to fiddle all these fasteners together but I'm going to try it and do it myself and start this lock nut Oop, it fell into my hand a little better angle here can barely see it all by feel and it started we got it hanging right there so let me go ahead and tighten this and then we're gonna have a fastly mounted bracket Okay, we're gonna tighten it. In the instructions it says to not crack the plastic up here by the ratchet. You don't wanna tighten it too tight. Okay, we're getting close. Let me orientate it. Okay. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna give it just another just another snug here. Okay, I am I'm satisfied with that. Bracket is installed. Just a little little oscillation here. Let me give it just one more. I just want to emphasize to not break this plastic. There we go. Yeah, okay. All right, well, let's get this filter in and attach our final lines. All right, I have gotten some rags down under this last line that we are gonna be messing with. We're gonna pop those lines out just like we did on the upper fuel filter. And we're just gonna pop this line off, okay? Not a lot of fuel came out. Um, what we're gonna need to do Per the instructions is we are going to need to rotate this plastic female N 180 degrees so it's facing upwards um, so however you guys want to do that is what we're gonna need to do in fact I'm gonna take this line off right here off the fuel filter and I'm going to just get a little more room Like, see how I'm gonna rotate this thing in here. Ooh, no big deal. Thing just rotated, rotated right around. We're gonna take this hose, the hose that has these fittings on it. I'm gonna route this hose underneath behind the newly installed bracket. 
and the brake booster. And I'm going to connect this line right to the fuel rail. And then you guys can imagine where this hose is gonna go. Let's get that new filter. That new filter, gonna take note with the arrow flow of direction. Let me get this line out of the way here. Let's set that in here like that. I am going to clip. I'm going to clip this hose on like this to press that tab. And then our last hose, which is right here. You guys check that out. It is going to plug into this line. Just like the fuel filter line. I hate these clips. This guy go down the clip. There we go. Push that thing on like that. You're going to push your fuel filter line on. And this guy. And this guy, we're gonna route down just like this. So you see it's facing the front of the vehicle and we're gonna plug that in. You guys can see we got just a little bit of play right there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of these rags from our repair area. So you guys can see exactly what this is all looking like. Let me step back here for a second. Pretty slick, s, s I'm very, very impressed. I like it, I like it. Check it out, that is it. That's the clusterness right there that you guys are gonna see adding on to your 6.7. Now, the last thing we need to do is we're gonna be checking for any leaks. I'm gonna go ahead and ask my assistant to turn this gentleman's key on and we're gonna inspect for leaks. I hear fuel flowing. Shut it off. I hear fuel flowing and look, there's fuel going in the bowl. Check it out, check it out. We can actually see it. How cool is that? Way cool. Still hear the fuel pump on. I have just a little bit of residual fuel. I'll spray all this off. Key off, key on. Look at that. How cool is it to actually see the fuel in your 6.7 right up on top of your engine? All right, I'm gonna put this CAC tube on and then we are gonna start this Super Duty. Yeah, we watched yeah. Last fire in the hole, last key cycle, charge air cooler pipe is on. You guys, this is what it's all about. Three, two, one. Check it out, everybody. Checking for leaks. Checking the metering valve. Let's see if we can get the light on. There it is. She's all hooked up. With no leaks. If this is something you guys want to add to your 6.7 Ford Diesel, do just like my customer has and pick you up an SNS Diesel Disaster Prevention Kit. This is a very nice manufactured kit. Very OE looking, and you know how I like OE stuff. Tell me what you think about this in the comment section below. If you have this on your truck, or if you're thinking about it, let me know. Let's talk about it on the live stream. Remember to like, comment, sub, share, and I'll see you guys all next time. See ya!